Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Honda Civic. Honda Civic in this generation is strictly front-wheel drive. It would seem that there is nowhere to wait for a catch. However, the Civic joints do not have a very large resource. After 120,000 km, there is a chance to hear a cracking sound during acceleration or when cornering due to wear or on both the external and internal joints of the axle shaft. Such a small resource could be attributed to the twisting of the run, but it's twisted in all cars, and the early wear of the Civic joint is manifested only in Civics. It also happens that drive shafts break due to corrosion. The fact is that the damper of the outer surface of the drive tube is not her hermetically sealed and collects moisture. In our conditions, this results in thorough corrosion and drive failures under load. Manual gearboxes are highly reliable, either 5 or 6 speed ones in breakdowns during operation with 1.4-1.8 liter engine were not noticed. With runs over 300,000, there are chances for unnecessary noise and it's difficult to engage gears, but everything is usually solved by a bulkhead with replacing bearings, troubleshooting for forks and synchronizers. The clutch is ordinary damper, the flywheel is also single mass, simple and cheap. The resource is not very long, but the Civic has a classic release bearing design with a fork and an external drive. The shaft 5-speed automatic transmissions of the SPCA and MPMA series are also renowned for their reliability. Such boxes are assembled on rolling bearings, have a minimum number of pushings, are able to work with very low oil pressure and have optimal gear rations. True, in comparison with the classical planetary structures, they are cumbersome and heavy and lag behind them significantly in speed. But 300-500 thousand mileage for such an automatic transmission is not a problem. The risk factors are known, rear oil changes and annealing. In addition, when trying to jump out of the mud, in no case should the gear be engaged if the car is moving in the opposite direction. This immediately kills the low hub overrunning clutch. From impurities in the oil, sooner or later the bearings begin to bust. The solenoids and shaft ceiling rings fail in the pressure regulator body wears out. This all happens in the worst case closer to 200 thousand mileage. In addition to the general reliability of the mechanical part, the box and the presence of an external oil filter in the cooling line help a lot. It is a disposable element inserted into the gap in a plastic casing similar to fuel filters or procarburetor pumps. In addition to excellent hydromechanics, there is also a rare variator on hybrids and a relatively common I-shift robot, which was installed on hatchbacks. It's hard to believe, but in comparison with I-Shift, the Buzz robot AMT is just a technological miracle. In any case, it doesn't jerk or burn the clutches on every second car and switches relatively quickly and relatively on time. The Japanese machine belongs to the first generation of robots and cannot boast of either quality of work, or reliability, or cheap repairs. The design is based on a conventional 6-speed manual gearbox, extremely reliable. Problems arise precisely with the clutch and shift control system. After 50-60 thousand mileage, the first minor troubles begin due to wear off brushes of the drive motors. At about the same mileage, clutch wear requires regular adaptation of the set point with the help of a dealer scanner at each service. By 100,000 km, the clutch kit is usually already replaced. After 100,000 bending of the clutch fork, breakdown of the control unit and motor gearboxes are likely, since there are a lot of plastic gears and the rods in the design, which over time simply cease to withstand the load. Closer to 200,000, the mechanical part also begins to give up. The load on the gear shift forks and synchronizers is much higher here than on a conventional manual gearbox. The SZCA series variator apparently was originally designed for more compact cars, in particular the Jazz. On a large Civic, even in a hybrid modification with a low-power 1.3-liter engine, it's difficult for it. The resource of a standard belt usually doesn't exceed 100,000, reinforced, 12 belts against the standard 9, about twice as much. The price of a new belt is about 25,000 rubles and a used unit costs a little more, which provokes the owners to finish off the automatic transmission to the last, until the worn-out belt closes the cones. Here are just the necessary modifications, less and less, and the surprise may be the price of a used bulkhead unit from Jazz into the box body from Civic, which will more than eat up all the savings. Honda motors are famous for their resource and indestructibility. The key to this is insensitivity to oil pressure, a well-designed and service-friendly design and the highest quality workmanship. The only pity is that in the 21st century these engines began to improve for the sake of strict emission and fuel consumption standards. And as a result, a tendency towards oil appetite, which comes over the years, 
Vibrations at idle speed due to their excessive underestimation, as well as the high load on the cooling system and its regular failures, were added to the traditional features of motors. On the Russian market, Civics are presented mainly with 1.8 engine RA18AI, R18A2. Much less common are engines 1.4 L13A7, L13Z4, 2.0 K20A, K20Z4, deformed 2.0. K20Z2, K20Z3, and 1.3 liter internal combustion engines from hybrid modifications LGA MF. Motors 1.6, 2.4, and diesel 2.2 cannot be found in Russia. If you delve into the general problem with the cooling system, then most often it's the main radiator that brings it down. It burns and it flows. The problem is the increased pressure in the system, clocked pressure relief valve, dirt on the radiator itself, and a clocked radiator of the air conditioner. The sensitivity of all gasoline engines to the state of the candles is not a bug, but a feature. It's better to change the candles and tips of the ignition modules every 30-40 thousand preventively and not when the engine is running out. The motors do not have hydraulic compensators, you need to adjust the clearance every 50-60 thousand mileage. The procedure is simple and doesn't require the purchase of calibrated pushers. Everything is like on a classic Jiguli and not any lockdown. The main thing is not to skip intervals and not skimp on a new valve cover gasket after the procedure is over. Moving on to the typical problems of individual engines, let's start small. That is with the L-Series 1.4. There are a few cars with such a motor on sale, but it's worth talking about it. There are four cylinders, an aluminum block, cast iron sleeves, a timing chain and Honda's IVTES phase adjustment system. Before installing, cars were equipped with an 88 horsepower 8 well version of this engine. L13A7 with two spark plugs per cylinder. After installing, they began to install a 100 horsepower 16 well version L13Z4 with the traditional ignition system. In general, we must admit that these are the most reliable Civic motors. Oil appetite, although it appears with age, is poorly expressed, and motors can easily tolerate even greatly increased oil change intervals without visible consequences. The motor is not prone to leaks in any of the versions, it has less vibrations than that of its older brother. The only drawback is the relatively low resource of the timing chain, it may not pass more than 150-180 thousand. The most common motor in Russia is the 1.8 R-series, RA18A1 and RA18A2. Both issue 140 forces and, one might say, are interchangeable. Structurally, it is similar to 1.4, but in terms of reliability it is slightly inferior. The good news is the increased average timing chain resource. Opinions about a specific resource differ. There are cases of replacement in the region of 200,000, some claim that the resource is closer to 300. One way or another, there is more bad news. Vibrations of the 1.8 engine at idle are associated, as mentioned before, with low revolutions, about 650 per minute versus 750 for 1.4, and with a relatively weak engine suspension. The supports are comparatively low resource, but they are expensive, especially hydrofilled right and the usual rear. They are often collective farms. Regular leaks of the BTEC valve gasket add to the headache. The gasket is really unsuccessful, it dubs in just a year or two, the oil flows like a river in case of a breakthrough, you can ruin the engine. But the valve is located in plain sight, the leak can be noticed during the initial inspection and replacing is not a problem. The price of the original does not bite, but the non-original is often better and slightly more expensive, unfortunately it is rare. Well, perhaps the biggest problem is the oil appetite, which begins to grow even in the guaranteed 100,000 mileage. Thank you should be set to the service interval for 15,000 km and even more for European cars. Should the drain intervals increase, oil viscosity, cold thermostat and gentle operation can turn the clock back. The oil appetite, if not lost, will become much less noticeable. In advanced cases, decarbonization helps, and the motor tolerates the most extreme of them, the side well. Along the way, you will most likely have to change the dilapidated parts of the crankcase ventilation system and possibly the oil pressure sensor, but this is much cheaper than overhaul. Practice shows that you can save even heavily neglected options that eat up to a liter per thousand. Unless, of course, the catalyst didn't have time to collapse from the oil maker and the pound of dust wasn't blown into the cylinders. On cars from the United States, a variant of the engine of the same series with a volume of 1.6 liters may be encountered. In fact, it differs little from the 1.8 engine in terms of operation, except that the power is less. Rare key series motors by and large do not differ much from the R-series, except that camshaft chipping and oil appetite are more pronounced. 
On this information about the problems of the Honda Civic is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.